Hello. Is that a bit loud? Is that loud? We have, for your delights, people, Bob Beagry, Stu John Ford, Peter Lee, everything under the sun. You want old style? You've got old style in the new style. And the juice? Everything under the sun, people. some music and we put it out on SoundCloud but lots of other people have, uh, have also written poems as part of Project Ono and uh, lots of other musicians have started to get involved as well so it's growing nicely. We're going to do some poems that uh, we've recorded with um, interesting soundscapes. This poem, I'm going to do about six poems. This first poem is called Nach Nach Karaig, and it's about a stone that's on the island of Gaia in Scotland. And uh, I was there, and uh, it's an ancient stone that goes back to the, to the time of Dalaradia, the kingdom came from Ireland into Scotland, the first Scots really, and um, it was all overgrown, and I thought if I touched it, a strange thing might happen and I might walk into the underworld and all this stuff, but it didn't really happen. So this is just called Knock Knock Carry, and it goes like this. Very odd point. 
<laughs> this is very important because I'm going to eat a muscaria, which, if you know it, is, is um, the name of the fly garret mushroom. So, um, it's about the fly garret mushroom tree. I don't think I need to say any more about that, apart from that it's a very strange point. It doesn't quite make sense. seconds slither across the threshold seasick on moist land pavement cracks see it swell pregnant wave about to crash your only hope to surf its crest between spurts of nausea, spouts of sweat, come the shakes. Deep invisibles revealed. Light divides its prisons. Animals speak in riddles, songs, scents on the wind, you remember in tail ends, the names before the naming. Your bloodstream thrum beats the tin pan sky fungi fidget in long reeds the fae arrive ruddy faces gather in peripheries I am lost in a snowflake on the lens of my specs Glass stains in mandel brot. Badger snuffles piles of leaves. Hair dances a moon among yew tree roots, standing stones. Dormouse drowns in a teapot as Christ of the Hollows plucks out his bleeding heart. Eat me. one night just until the shrivel start then swallow in just the spell across the threshold hair dances a glass moon among yew tree roots Everything under the sun. And it starts with a little epigram by the um, 
Arabian poet called Rumi that says, he says a bit of his poem, like a thief I crept and entered a house and it was my own home. Sandpipers. The next gathers its gift of dark distance in a French fold. The breaks apart on the sandbank. It is a breathing machine, and sometimes it's the quiet voice that penetrates the din to enter the brain. Imagine the angel, the best possible you, terribly unleashed from the tight rope of survival with fuck all to lose or gain. sisters from uh, Greek myth who were cousins of the Gorgons and the Grey sisters lived on this island um, as kind of hags and uh, Perseus when he went and killed Medusa he had to, he didn't know where the Gorgons were so he had to go and ask the Grey sisters and um, they wouldn't tell him so, but the thing about the Grey Sisters is they had one eye. There was three of them. They had one eye, one tooth between the three of them. And uh, he nicked them. And he wouldn't give them back until they told him where the Gorgons were. So you go and kill poor old Medusa. And uh, so this is about the Grey Sisters. Something skew with approaches from stage left. 
pass me our eye, sister, so I may spy? Is it a man? He may fall for me? For one of us, take us from this grey world into a realm of love. That time has long gone, sister. If ever it was here, faded by the time it flourished, my dear. What are we, sister? I have forgotten. They call us widows of perpetual war, but I don't recall any husband in my past shards. And what have we become? We are rags and bones, sister, figuring in exile. We are rocks, sand and surf. We are vermin scratching at the threshold of order, sleeping within the hollow of a blown turn egg, watching menopausal waves swell beyond the scar to home months of blood. Where are we, sis? of this place where Orpheus sang, sang sad songs of loss where we squat in the charnel reek of the deep cave mouth hand me our snaggle tooth sister so I can chew this gristle strip our fat scrape skin and sinew sisters sisters what shall we become? Gymnasts, my sweet, with perfect balance, tight roping the borders with the grace of Cirrus on Sinus. We shall blow pink bubbles with chewing gum. Mine shall be the biggest. No, mine shall be the best. What must we do? My sisters, draw old paths in damp sand with picked clean bones, scrape the silver from the moon, pass me the eye, sister, the one we stole from the stranger, I must decipher the monologic view, refract its gaze in water prisons, weave weird threads between anti-life and afterlife, skate around the frozen sea, wait for the blood to stop. Me and Jane Byrne have been writing a collection together called Remnants. It's about um, a group of survivors in the northeast of England after the, another great, great flood. And they're kind of like one or two generations after the flood. The legends of uh, the survival and the, and the ark um, are still apparent. And uh, they're living this kind of weird tribal lifestyle. And uh, we've written about 45 poems that we're trying to get published together. Um, and this is the first one. This is called Remnants. The old man used to take us out under the rocks, snot slippy and green at low tide and lathered with flies that foggled our feet as we stepped leery over the worm stems and knotted kelp to peer into their rock pools. 
in wiggles, house in stones to latch them Scotland crabs. And the sea rose and fell about us, bearing and covering the bulls of a petrified forest. The limited rich tiles of a once thriving B and B called Neptune View. The washed out bingo hall, the barnacle spire of an ancient kirk where the one god once drowned. Listen, he tells us, sometimes you can hearken the kirk bells still ringing under the waves, calling all the men. At night I'd wake, thinking I'd heard them, to pry over the stockade of scrap cars and coward stalls across the fruit plain. And one day if the myrrh were gathering to march from the deep waters, bringing the cold fury of the drowned god upon the remnants of the bands of men. Every morning for me lemons, the old man had me recite the songs and the psalms the elders sang on board ship throughout their great floating. The rhapsody of the raven's skull, the ballad of the boar's tusk, the hymn of the stag's heart, the canticle of the whale's lung. So um, that's just the first one, and then in the poems you get all those ancient texts that are not really texts because we've made them up. But like the Canticle of the Whale's Lung is something that they used to worship the world and all this lot. It's really crazy fucking manuscript. <laughs> I hope that someone takes it. It's a really great thing. And Jane Burners is such a weird and interesting poet. Um, so we've got two poems left. This is called Tumbleweed, and um, I love Edward Hopper, the American painter Edward Hopper that paints loneliness, loneliness emptiness, stillness, people in odd places all on their own. And there's a, one of his uh, great paintings, it's called The Automat, and it's about a woman sitting in like a, a diner or somewhere, and there's a black window behind her with all the reflections of the lights in the window and she's just sitting there on her own in like 1930s clothes and uh, so this poem is just thinking about why she's there Tumbleweed wireless weather forecasts, rain on the window, bullets from Tommy guns, fired from some vintage gangster movie. For we can still feel the threats of family, of home, the drone of telegraph lines across the prairie. Close to midnight, this fugitive Gumada 
barrel swivel, crow calls through falling leaves, the slice of a spade in soil, and yet quiet stillness in this autumn mat, the swirl of undissolved cream suspends for now the weight of a murder, grief that comes with a game called Vendetta. finish it. I wasn't mature enough when I started it to finish it, but I wouldn't have never finished it if I hadn't started it writing it at that time. Some poems uh, you have to live with. Um, it's called My Grandmother's Ghost. Start off with two epigrams. I'll give you a nod. I'll see this. So, um, the first one is a uh, Quote from a poem by Walter Delamere. In the black furore of a field, I saw an old witch hare this night, and she cocked a lissom ear, and she eyed at the moon so bright. Second one is a traditional English proverb. Hair before, trouble behind. Change it cross and free me. back into the world. I heard her infectious scrabble scuffle. But fog's bulbous fingers clung to every object. Stroked each branch of the berry-laden ruins. Ripe blackthorn fruit. The dew weighted grasses. eyes a glare, stewed in night skillet, and this new dawn bound up in the folds of a winding sheet, as if stillborn. The hair comes, nuzzling, carrying the news of the day's death on her ear tips. A grey tail leads the way through a thorny gap, scamper through the dark nettle hidden hole betwixt twisted briars. The outskirts of town, the rim of a grounded galaxy. The hair smiled, I shuddered. For it was the first time I'd seen a hair do such a strangely human thing. Though I'd seen humans snarl like baying dogs, cast sidelong glances, sly as pampered cats. And for the first time since her death I heard her speak, a wind on meadow grass. Like rain, settle, she said, wait a while, 
watch darkness shrink. Alone in the form, shoulder to shoulder, ruminating with a hair in a secret hollow, under the hedgerow, on a day the dawn was throttled by fog, we watched grass grasp itself. Lagomorph, long foot, drums the ground. We listen to its echo resound upon pine bark and weathered stone wall. Spaces between ache to be filled by brainwork. She pushed the tapered head under the raised sole of my foot in a burrowed ritual of greeting. Look, she said, how fog eats all, but leaves it whole. God knows how my grandmother, Duchess of Dotty Innocence, had become this hair Buddhisattva. The hair produced a leaf ball of dew and fresh rain, a piece of sky to scry my face, a filament of life connected to the circuit by a thread fine as cobweb. In it, I saw the bay of Arasig, the tide's remote tug, and it turned my gut with a raw memory of love. Crown of the thicket queen, sit upon the throne of the nettle king. I am sick as fuck of this great string, I say. My fingernails gouge at soil, rig of grit and seed and shell. Is that any way to talk to you in that? Come, let's raise the first streaks of sun when fog breaks. We leap horizons, temptations, blackbirds hatch from books nest in a tangle of black briony and white tendril. Someone has written a scroll, joined up letters, 